Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I want to show you some ways to work with stencils. It may surprise you to hear that I'm a stencil kind of gal, but what will not surprise you to find out is that I like to use them in the messiest ways possible. So stick with me, and I'm going to show you some off-the-beaten-track ways to work with stencils in your art journals, altered books, collage, and other mixed-media projects. Well, it is pretty obvious here that I do like a Tim Holtz stencil. But one of the great things about working with stencils is that you can also use one that is easier to find, inexpensive, and it's going to give you beautiful results. The first thing I want to show you is how to use it with some gesso. Now, what you want to think here is the same idea as modeling paste but I don't have any modeling paste and I'm too cheap to buy it. So I use gesso instead. If you have any thick bits that are kind of near the top uh, that are drying out a little bit, use that and just add big unafraid gloppy layer there and carefully peel. And now you have what I call the peeling fresco look. Now, if that is a little too monochromatic for you, you can also add some color. I made this yesterday and let it dry overnight. It's a little hard to see as it's white on white, but you can see as it's dried, there is some, some raised texture there. Here are some ways to add color to your dried gesso. The first one is with uh, acrylic paint. And yes, I am using my fingers because I'm a grown up and I can do whatever I want. And I'm just adding it over here. And you can see that it's creating some, some contrast. You can go darker or lighter. Next, I have some fountain pen ink. This is a Cassis color by J. Urbain. And let's see. I really like the resist using ink. If you don't have ink, you can probably, I haven't tried it, but I'm pretty sure you could use a watercolor wash. And get something similar to this effect as you can with a distress stain. Let's go over here and play with these guys. So you've got some contrast and again if you want to work it a little bit it's going to give you as much or as little or as mixed coverage as you want. Finally, I really like the effect that you get when you use an ink pad. I'm using a blending tool, but if you don't have one, you can use a makeup sponge. It does the job just fine. Okay. So that's with a, an ink pad. And if you wanna go really nuts, go mad. Try adding the ink pad directly to your stencil. Look at that. That's a lot of look and I love it. You don't have to stop here. You can try oil pastels, gelatos, soft pastels, whatever coloring things that you have in your toolbox. Try them and see what works for you. Now let's look at using stencils with embossing powders. Normally with an embossing powder you would use an embossing stamp pad, but I can never find mine, so I'm going to improvise and use some very, very, very thin layer of acrylic gel. 
going to add embossing powder. Tap off the excess. And now heat it up with heat gun. I'm not going to try to talk over the heat gun. I apologize for the noise. Just watch as the powders become uh, hot. They blister and create a raised effect. Let's go. All right, that's enough of that. But see what you have here? And it's really great the way you can see the text peeking out from underneath. Over here, I have already added some clear embossing powder. When it's melted, it turns into almost a rosin or it looks kind of glass-like. I'm going to add some color to that and for that I'm going to use Distress Stain. A little bit there of the green and a little bit here with a plum. So again, you've got to resist and where the color is resisting, you can see the text underneath. So you have distressed texture and mystery all in one go. If you follow my videos, you know that I love a spritzer or a mini mister. I already have a longer video on YouTube showing a variety of ways to use these, and I will put the link to it in the text below this video, so you can check that out if you want. Today, I just want to show you how to use it with the stencils. This is a page I've already done that's dried. You can see that it's uh, messy and drippy and pretty all on its own, but it also makes a great background for an art journal page if you want to get that started. Something like that. This is a store-bought spritzer. It's Distress Spray Stain by Tim Holtz in Antique Linen. And what it does when you use it with a stencil is it's not going to be perfect and precise. It bleeds around the edges just a little bit and it gives some mystery. If you really want to commit to that, and you do, Dampen the page. This is a spritzer that just has some water in it. And now add your mist. And you can see that it's ghostly, haunted, looks like uh, an old house with peeling paint or whatnot. Do not even think of wiping off this ink because that's just wasteful. Instead, I'm going to put this down here in one of my altered books. And I've already started a background there. Finally, this is my favorite way to embellish and finish a layout that's using a stencil with a soft chalk pastel. It's pretty subtle. It's just some mark making, but sometimes it will really just make your finish page pop a little. This spritzer just has some water in it. You want to add that to your page. 
Do not get it wet, wet, just damp. Now, color over your stencil and your damp page with the pastel. And you're going to have to work it in there with your finger. Okay? want to maybe pull it down so that you have different thicknesses of it. But when you pull up your stencil, now you've got, again, you've got your, your torn wallpaper look that's really charming. Let's look at it with a, another kind of stencil. This one is Tim Holtz. It's called Burlap. And this is a De La Rauner. I'm sorry, De La Rowney soft pastel. You can see that it hasn't really gone in. You need to work it in. Pull it down and around. And there you go. You can even... Again, you don't want to waste it. Use that. I do not, myself, I don't set these. I don't do anything more to get the chalk to set. I just leave it air dry, and I've never had it move around on me. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, and please subscribe to my online newsletter, which goes out every other week with paper goodies and journal arts and free downloads and good stuff. The link to that is in the text below this video. Now, please remember, these are just jumping off points. It's up to you to take these ideas and imagine ways to use them in your own work. If you have any feedback or questions, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear from you and compare notes. Until later, happy making.